Hello, in this video we will look at how to deploy Teradata Database Developer Edition on Azure and how to configure and use the Teradata Data Stream Controller utility to backup data from the database to Azure Blob Storage. So in the, the PDF guide that comes with Teradata Database that you can download from Azure, there's a chapter describing the backup strategies and one of the primary backup strategies is using the DSC VM to create object level backups in Azure. So how do you find the DSC? Well, you come to Teradata website, uh, teradata slash Azure, go to products page. And if you scroll down, you will see that every product, every edition uh, has the data stream controller included. If you click on data stream controller, it will take you to describe to that product. You can find the individual listing of that product in Azure Marketplace by clicking on product documentation it will open the documentation search page and you can see the data stream architecture guide, um, the PDF that you can download to, to see how to configure it and we'll look at it soon. Let's go and first deploy the Teradata database together with the DSC so it's pre-configured out of the box. So I found Teradata database in the marketplace. I click on it and I will be quickly specify the values for the deployment. Okay, we'll deploy it in East US2 region. For the database, we'll pick the developer edition, write the passwords, uh, select no Japanese, we'll use developer edition, two nodes, local storage. We'll deploy the viewpoint, it is required uh, because we will want to use the viewpoint to manage the DSC and we'll specify the passwords. Single system, server management will skip, REST services will skip, data stream controller we will install. We'll provide the password for the local internal database and the password for the DSC itself. The VM size, That's the one that's recommended. We'll use that. Ecosystem Manager will not install. Data Mover will not install. Query Grid Manager will not. We'll set up quickly the virtual network settings. And we'll kick off the deployment after this quick final validation is running. We should see it succeeding. I have enough cores in the subscription, which I should. Correct, and we'll read the terms of service right here and create. So now it started the deployment. If we go to the resource groups, we can watch the deployment starting to kick off. If you click on this deployments link, you can watch the deployment going. That's the main template and line by line inside of this deployment, we can see all the parameters we have provided and line by line all the resources that are being created. So as we give it a few minutes, this will finish in about 30 minutes. I will obviously pause the video in the meantime while we're waiting for this to finish and then we'll pick it up from that point. What we will do uh, once it finishes deploying, we will add a public IP address to the viewpoint server so that we can access it. By default, it will not have a public IP address for security purposes. And let's see, so we are creating the NICs and the DSC NIC is already being created. So you can see the deployment is starting up and we'll get back to it as soon as it's done. So we can see the deployment finished. It took about uh, 49 minutes to do the whole thing, installing the database nodes, the viewpoint and the DSC. So that's the finished deployment. If we again glance here, we can see the template and the parameters that were used and all of the sub deployments completing. Okay, so but while the video was paused, I also went ahead and quickly added a public IP address to the viewpoint so we can access it. So we'll go to the viewpoint and we'll access it in a minute. And let's do that right now. So I'm already logged in. So let me just show you how it looks when the login is first time. So I'm providing the username and the password that we specified during deployment. 
and it pulls up the viewpoint and we'll explore it in a second. But what I wanted to show on the screen is what we have deployed. So we have a database, uh, VM1, database VM2. We have the DSC, data stream controller VM, a viewpoint VM. And uh, if you remember, I was entering only to deploy one database while I was recording the first part of the video, but I went ahead and actually deployed two nodes just to make it a little bit more interesting and more realistic. So that is the resource group in which everything landed. So now we have a viewpoint. If we click here, we can see the nickname of our system and there is no activity. You can see the queries and everything else related to the system appearing right here. Okay, and you can see there's no activity right now. So we will go and uh, uh, configure the system next. So as a first step, let's just quickly add some content here. Let's add a SQL scratch pad to, uh, so we can do some SQL queries without uh, SSH connectivity. And also let's just add a space utilization as well, just for fun. So there, there is our uh, current databases that we have, and you can see the sizes, et cetera. It will be convenient. And then we will be able to create a database right here uh, for us to experiment backing up and restoring. So later, we don't have to refresh the view and create those databases. So to create a database, we'll do something extremely simple. Just we'll create a database um, DB1. Uh, with permanent storage of 5 gigs, spool of 1 gig, and temporary space of 1 gig. It's more than we need for this test. We'll use a very simple table, but we'll just uh, create it anyways. So we'll execute this command. So we need to specify our login credentials for the database. And we'll run the creation of the database right now. Okay, so the database was created. Let's now also create a table. Okay, just with ID and name, nothing fancy, just again to show the, an example. Um, and I think uh, basically I've, it says that create table failed because I need to actually select the database uh, into which I want to put it. So let's do it again. Okay, and then let's insert some data into the so we'll put some data, extremely simple, into the table we created. Okay, let's now select and make sure the data is there. Okay, so we got our uh, database filled out with table. Let's also right away create another database that we'll be using later for um, restoring. So we'll call it DB2, okay? And it will not have any tables. So we're creating the DB2 of the same size. Great. So now we have the databases create. As a next step, let's quickly uh, take a look at something. So we were going to uh, now VNC, uh, SSH into the viewpoint um, right here. So I already pre-configured the connectivity. So I'm right now SSHing into the viewpoint. So I'm in the viewpoint VM, become root. And what we can see is the IP address of the viewpoint. The IP address of the first database node in my case is 10.0.0.4. So let's jump box into the node, the first node and glance uh, at that node, make sure we are able to access it. Okay, so we'll SSH into 10.0.0.4. Okay, same password. Uh, this is our database node, one of two. Um, and we can see all of our AMPs, two nodes that, uh, that are ex uh, existing right here. And we can see our amps on each of the nodes running right there. Everything is good. Perfect. Okay, so we are uh, we are able to obviously check via BTAC as well that we have the database ready. So we'll just log on. Database D1, DB1. 
select from T1, right? And we will see the data that we had. Great. So we are at a point where we can now start configuring our backup. So I'm opening this um, guide that we downloaded, PDF guide from Teradata, uh, describing how to do backup with the data stream controller. And if you read this original guide uh, that you download, you can you you will see that there is some some requirements right here, right to configure the data stream controller. An important thing to note is that you only need to follow these requirements to configure and run all of these commands if you install the data stream controller separately from the database later. But because we installed it at the same time, Teradata templates make it much easier for us. They already pre-configured a whole bunch of it and actually configured the viewpoint VM for us as well. So we don't need to do any of this configuration, okay? So we don't need to configure this because we deployed it via a single template. What we do need is we need to look at another guide called um, Data Stream Utility Configuration. And this is what, um, what the deployment approximately looks like, right? So we have the... Um, database nodes one and two, right, uh, available to us. And we have the viewpoint on which we already see. We have the DSC server, which we didn't SSH into, but it exists there. But instead of this um, of this data, data disk storage, what we have in here, what we will have here is the Azure Blob storage, okay? So now what we need to do to configure it is we need to follow the instructions that are described here, configuring viewpoint and bar setup. And I will step you through all these instructions and we will configure the Azure Blob Storage. Uh, so first we need to enable the bar portlet and add the Tera database system to the bar portlet. So if you follow these instructions here, you'll be able to achieve the same result that I'm going to, to show you visually. So we're going to return back to the viewpoint, okay? And we're going to go to the add content screen. And later we're going to add the bar operations, but we are not yet ready to use bar operations. Rather, what we need to do first is we need to do the bar setup. So again, just to show you what I went, you click on this tools and you select uh, bar setup right here, okay? That's what the guide says. So what we do here is this is how we're going to configure our system. DSC VM0, I think that is the name of the VM. Well, let's double check. Let's exit back to the viewpoint and see if um, this is the right VM name. And it is. There it's its IP. Okay. So we're able to ping that VM that got deployed for us. Um, we'll enable it. We'll click discover. It found it greatly. So we'll leave all of these the same and we'll say apply okay so that added a dsc server for us then we are going to configure system so you can see a system already defined in there but that is for backing up the repository the actual local system we need to add another system here following the instructions from from this guide so we just follow these instructions and then we now need to add a system okay so let's do that so we'll click system add teradata system from our database uh, for each node the default limits will be uh, 10 and 20 or let's say 20 and 20 and job maybe on a node let's put 10 just for fun apply we need to provide the username for the database system. Press OK. So now notice what it's saying. It's very important to follow this. System, configuration, success, restart DS main, and the system to register the new selector, OK? So to do this, we need to do some, see, we cannot activate the system yet. It's not active. So what do we do is we follow again the guide, right? And the guide is pretty good. You're going through and you need to add a system and then it describes what we need to run, 
okay we need to go onto the first node the first database node that's why we jumped the box into it so let's go again and ssh into the first node okay we'll sudo become root clear the screen let's zoom in a little so we'll run command cn term six that's the command that was uh, advertised to us in the doc start bards main s to stop it okay and then we'll do start words main to start it okay and then these were the commands you can see here and then we can try this command show the status i'm not sure this will actually display the status but let's just try it start words main g okay so it is not saying actually the status but now let's give it a little bit of time and once that is done okay we should be able to see that the system is activated right so we can click the deactivate system in the activate system bottom now and save it so what we just did actually enabled the system those were important steps to follow Okay, so next step is media servers. And we can see the media servers, again, are already pre-registered with, with all of their IP addresses. Those, this is the DSC server itself. And these are the two nodes. Why they are here is because during the installation, the templates created them there. Backup solution, we will configure the Azure Blob backup. So uh, as what, that's what we wanted to see. It says plus to add an account. So how do we know what information to provide? So media server finished, configuring a backup solution. And then as we scroll down, we can see the blob storage. For the blob storage, we'll need the storage account, an account key, blob type, blob containers, prefix, and storage. Unit. So why don't we go first and create the storage account in uh, my subscription. I'll pause the video to quickly create those because that, that takes a few seconds and then I will show what those look look like. Um, actually, we will let's just add the storage account together in a video so it may be a little bit easier to follow. So storage account. That's what we want. Create. We will call it, okay, that's going to be my storage account, general purpose, but we'll make it blob storage. We'll make it locally redundant, just we'll make it hot instead of cool tier. Um, we'll keep this disabled. We'll put it in the existing resource group in this region and we'll leave the rest. So we'll say create. This will take about a minute to create. Okay, so we can see the storage account got created. Let's just go to the storage account and add uh, two containers. Container one. And container two. Just for variety's sake, so we can show how it works with two containers. Okay, so now we have the storage account. We'll grab the access key and we'll configure it. So let's uh, let me copy the access key into my notepad. So let's add an account, storage account AV Teradata DSC1. I think that's the one we used. We'll paste the account key here. We'll say it was hot. Um, Container one will be the container that we'll use. Storage units will keep at one. This is how many files it creates. Um, I'm not sure if it makes a difference in terms of performance, something to review more in depth and documentation. If maybe having more storage units here, or if it will create additional files. And we'll just put the prefix um, for the backups here. So let's say uh, backup one maybe will be our prefix, okay? So all that, we're done with, with this approach, with adding the uh, storage account. And the next step would be to configure the target groups. So we can see remote group right now is only one. And we will say add. 
enable target group. We'll just make it simple. Azure Blob Storage. It says which one. Well, it knows. And then it says uh, which media server to use. So we'll say this one, this container, this prefix, uh, and point the backup destination to the second container. This is where more investigation is needed to understand one to use one media server and to use both. For now, I'm just putting each server to be its media server and put in separate container and separate prefix. Okay, so we created those. Then those other settings are just about the backup and about the job status. Okay, and we have everything pre-configured at this point. Okay, so we can uh, go and look on the actual node, let's VNC or SSH. From the viewpoint, let's SSH into the DSCVM0. And do some commands that exist on DSC, right? So DSC has commands on this node. We can see via the command line tool what we have configured. List components, T system, right? So this will show us our system configuration right there. Uh, we can also list components, T Azure app. This will list our Azure configuration. Okay, right there. Let's also list components and see our media server. And we can do a lot of this command line um, operations to see different parts of the system. So just the UI and the command lines here are very convenient for automating things as well, starting jobs, etc. So now we have our system set up, okay? So let's do, let's add uh, more content here. And we'll add the bar operations, right? So we're actually going to add this to create the backup jobs, run the backup jobs and see what happens, okay? So let's take a look again. We have two containers in the storage account. Both of them are empty at this point, okay? So let's add the bar operations to the screen, okay? So now we have no backup jobs created yet, okay? Let's create one backup job and let's pick what we're going to backup. So let's pick one of those databases uh, that we created before. We're not seeing them yet here. Let's see if they will appear now. Sometimes it takes a few seconds to appear. So it took a little while to display. What I did is I went into the monitored system, data collectors, and for database space and dictionary updated it to be every five minutes and I applied it to force it to refresh so I can see my database DB1 and DB2 here. So now let's um, actually create a backup job. Hopefully it will be listed here. So backup job, backup one, source system database, Okay, and target group. We'll skip the description for now. We can see that our database is visible right there. Okay, and then when you click here, you can see you know nothing. But if you click right here, you can expand the view to see what you want to back up. Right, so let's say backup tables. So you can see the table. So we'll just back up the whole database. Okay. So that will be our backup. And save this. So we have a backup job defined. Then we can run this job right from here, or we can run this job from the command line. We'll just run it here for now. This will create a full backup because we never had a backup before.
So the backup job is starting. If we click here, we can see the status, the running status of the job. And if we go to our command line tools, while it's running, we can actually try to see it from the command VSC, job status log, name backup one. Let's see what's happening. This will show us the output via command line. So it says completed. So let's see. So we get our backup done within a few minutes. It's a very tiny table. So it was very, very fast. View phase log and everything got backed up. So we will go then to the uh, storage account and look at it. So going to the storage account, we can see that it created in container one backup one files with some data. In container two, it also created some files with some data. So we got some backups performed. Let's perform a couple more inserts. So database DB1, insert into T1 ID name, values four, name four. I think we had three records before. So now we're going to insert a few more records. And we'll do another backup, which will be kind of incremental. Okay, so let's select what we have in table one. So we should have four records now. And we'll be backed up just a few of them. So I will close this to make it a little easier to see the rest. So you can see four records. Let's go back up to the job and run this job again. Let's do a Delta backup. So it's running. Let's see the status. And obviously, um, this is right now a tiny table. So in this example, we are not backing up a huge table. In a future video, I'll show how to generate a very large table using TD Bench um, tool and then back that up so we can see the performance. But we'll look at it in a separate video. This is just to show how the backups look, right? So we had one row backed up and we will get more files in storage now for this tiny backup. So let's try a restore operation at this time, right? So we, we backed it up. Let's go and say we had a mistake and we deleted all of the data in this table. Okay. So we're going to delete all of the data in the table. And we can see it's empty now. So let's see if we can get our data back. So how would we do it? We can create a restore job from the existing backup job. And it's going to say, okay, what do you want to restore? It knows all of the tables and other things that are part of this backup. We're going to say everything, okay? It's going to tell us how much it is in size. Restore one into the same database it has to be one of the same systems okay at from this target group and we're going to save this so this is the restore job at this point and we're going to run it and let's look so first let's look at the backup log uh, output from previous restore from previous backup right so that was the last one And let's now see the restore job stats. So again, I'm just showing how to see the logs, the same logs, both in the command line and in the utility, in the UI. So it restore is running and it's completed. And let's see 
what we have. And we restored everything that we needed uh, back to us. So another type of job I wanted to show you is an analyze job, which will basically just test the restore. And another job that we can do is a restore job but from a new job and let's restore it into the new database, the database T2. So database DB2, right? That currently does not have table T1 in it. It will say table not found. So restore two will be where are we going to put that? So let's see how this will behave. So we're going to pick, let's select from where. So, and let's, for this one, restore the original three records. Let's say the fourth record was wrong. So um, the specified version, we're going to take the earlier version. Okay. The earlier version, the, not the Delta one, but the earlier version, we're going to restore that. So we pick a restore point from that backup set. It knows exactly what was there. Okay. Again, to see the rest, just pick tables and you can see it. You can actually rename it uh, T1, let's call it T2. And we'll restore it right here. To a different database. Okay. So we're basically restoring this to a different database. I'm going to save it. And let's run this job. So it's running. Again, these are tiny jobs, so they take very fast to run. It's still executing, it takes a second. This screen refreshes every few seconds. We can also check it here, restore two. Okay, it's completed. So we should be able to see it's completed. And let's see in a database too now, if we have the table and what is the data in that table. And you can see the data in the table contains the three records because we reinstalled the previous, just to double check, we reinstalled the previous restore point here. So this is great. And then we can see the full set of data here. So uh, this shows approximately how to do the backups using DSC. Obviously, there is a lot more tuning uh, that needs to be set up. So talk to the Teradata experts uh, on your team or uh, from Teradata about how to configure the DSC properly. But on a high level, this is the way you can restore data. And now we have data in both uh, databases set up and configured. Thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next video in the future about TD Bench.